Welcome folks. Uh, what I have for you today is uh, somewhat of a lesson uh, on basic uh, ignition for your vehicle, car or truck. Um, I'm going to take you back in time, probably till uh, oh, back to about 1974 or earlier before we started to get in with the electronic modules and electronics and everything. Um, what you see before you here, we can start, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the path of how this uh, thing actually works, but we'll I'll explain some basic things about the component parts before we get that far along. Uh, start with this. This is what they used to use up until about 1974. This is a General Motors uh, point set. It has an adjustment screw here which most other um, manufacturers never never had. Um, it just basically works like a switch. There's a set of contact points in there and they open and close just like a switch. And That's what controls the uh, the primary voltage in the coil and uh, as we move along you can actually see what's going on. What you see here, this canister here is called a, uh, a condenser or capacitor if you will. Most people call it a condenser. It's rated at about, uh, I think it's about a quarter of a, uh, what was it? It's measured in microfarads, 0.25 or something there, give or take, but it's balanced. It has to be balanced for the actual circuit test, otherwise these points here will start to pit and if it's uh, and if it uh, stops functioning, uh, basically the, the car will stop uh, functioning. It, it acts as a, an uh, electron storage tank and it keeps, uh, like I say, the points from pitting as, as well as uh, it balances the system. So the, the condenser has to be good and the points have to be clean and in good condition for it to work properly. Uh, these things when they're operating, they only open up, oh, what is it, about 20 thousandths of an inch? Uh, say say a 30 second uh, ballpark, you can look up specifications for that in a, any book or on the net and find out what the actual opening is for each individual application. But it doesn't open very much and in, in this uh, demo that I'm going to show you today I'll be opening it up a, a lot more to, to give you a visual on your video to see what's going on. So that's the switch part that actually controls what's going on. Uh, I'll get over to the distributor now. I've got two distributors. One set up with the uh, wires that lead to the spark plugs. This other one here, they're, they're both worn out so I'm going to use this as a demonstrator. Inside there is where all the activity happens. Um, this point set, mind you, this is this one's out of a V8, this point set, but I'm going to mix and match parts just to give you the uh, general description on how it works. This actually sits down on top of the breaker plate inside the distributor housing and this is all contained within the uh, distributor cap. You don't see any of this, just maybe a wire or two hanging out the side, that's all, until you take the cap off. And um, what I have here is, uh, there's the rotor. The, the V8 one didn't look much like this. It was, uh, actually I've got one here. For the V8 it looked like this for General Motors, a big round thing. But I'm going to use this one. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I've um, sort of put all this together. And what happens in there, if you can see it on the video, is there's a shaft and it's got a cam, a six, uh, for this one it's a six cylinder, so it'll be a six point cam that's underneath here that triggered these points. So this is spinning around approximately half of the speed of the crankshaft or the engine speed there. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, got a helical gear that runs off the, um, the camshaft and it turns this at half the engine speed. So basically what happens, uh, actually what I'll do is what I've, I've done here to, for more clarity. I'll get rid of that. And what I've done is I've uh, reworked this so we could put it on top. And what this thing does is it spins around. This is inside, mind you. You wouldn't be seeing this normally with the cap this oriented the, the correct way. But this is spinning around half the engine speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of like uh, show you in the best way that I can and as simple as I can on how this thing works. So what you see here, this yellow wire here coming along into the coil, that's the, the positive marking on the coil. That basically comes from your ignition switch. Now I won't get into detail, uh, they do drop the voltage on here for starting and running purposes so the coil won't burn up. But I, in future videos if I get that far I'll be explaining what they did to uh, Put resistance in this wire but for now that's the the battery feed uh, voltage and current from your ignition switch goes into the coil primary there's a uh, two sets of coils in here around an iron core 
and what this does is ener energizes the, uh, the primary coil. Now this switch, like I was telling you about the point set, this is spinning around in here like so, like there's a, a shaft with a cam on it. What I've done is taken a bolt to simulate a six-sided uh, cam with cam lobes on it, filed the little points off there so it will sort of mimic uh, the cam that triggers the points. So as, as this thing is spinning around at half the engine speed, every time it hits Every time it hits a high spot, it opens the points up, and then when it comes down to the flat, there's actually a clearance there, and that closes the points together to create the circuit for the primary. <clears throat> so you can imagine that this thing is just, only it's, you can barely see it move. I'm doing it much more so you can see it on the video, but just only like a 32nd of an inch or less, it's barely opening, and it's going along in, in time with that, uh, that simulated cam I made from the bolt. So every time these points are closed, it, uh, connects the circuit from the ignition feed battery voltage and this is grounded inside a distributor and the whole thing is grounded through the vehicle frame and, and the engine itself. So when that's closed, <coughs> excuse me, on the primary coil there's less turns of this primary coil. It creates a magnetic field within the coil. Okay, So the next time, right now between, when this rotor is between terminals which go to the spark plug leads, uh, the points are generally closed, so you're building up this magnetic field, and then as soon as uh, they're all timed together, when this is approaching one of the towers, in in order to make the connection to go to the that particular spark plug that's uh, supposed to be firing, this will be on the high point of this cam. Mind you, this this whole thing is is rotating together, but I'm not going to go into detail with the. Uh, advanced mechanisms both mechanical and uh, vacuum at this point just to keep it basic so it's understandable so basically if you can imagine that this high point on this cam is tracking at the same time that this uh, pointer here is on the rotor where it makes the connection so when it's approaching one of those terminals this is on the high spot that opens the points okay so that breaks the primary circuit for the primary coil windings and what happens through induction on the secondary set of windings, coil windings within the coil, uh, there's a much greater uh, number of turns. So that magnetic field collapses. It gets induced into the, uh, the secondary set of windings, which is much more, and that boosts the voltage from your basic 12 volts up to as much as 30,000 volts. But that depends on uh, many factors. Uh, basic one that comes to mind is the spark plug gap. Like the, the larger the gap you have in your spark plug, uh, the more voltage it'll take to fire it, just in general terms. So when these are closed, the magnetic field in here, or sorry, when these are open, it breaks the primary uh, current circuit in here, and uh, then what happens, that induction happens, it boosts the voltage through the secondary windings, and then it gets discharged into the center wire here, into the center of the um, distributor cap. Through there it goes down and through, on the other side here, there's a metal contact, then it shoots to the one that this is lining up at. It arcs across inside the cap, and then it'll it'll go through the wire to the particular spark plug that it's firing. An example here with the lead connected, and uh, we'll we'll kind of um, use this this connection here as that particular lead that's firing this plug. Mind you, in this particular um, example, we're using a six-cylinder engine, so. Um, you'll have six spark plugs naturally, six cable leads, and then the high tension lead from the coil to the distributor cap. Okay, so then that cycle repeats itself. Uh, if your engine's, uh, say on your tachometer, your engine's turning 3000 RPM, this thing should be, uh, in theory, spinning half of that, 1500 RPM or 1500. So this thing is really moving along, but this is inside the cap, mind you. I just put it on top here to show you uh, the relationship on uh, where where this thing would all happen. So when it's between, like I say, when it's in between here, that rotor connection tip on the rotor there, when it's in between, generally the points are closed and it builds up that uh, that um, magnetic field in the primary coil. And then once it's very close to one of the, uh, the contact points, it doesn't actually connect, it arcs across, there's a clearance in there. And so that that point, that cam is spinning at the same basic speed as that without the advance considered. It hits the high point, that opens the points up. The magnetic field in here collapses, gets induced into the secondary windings which boosts the voltage 
as much as uh, and the older ones up uh, as high as 30,000 volts goes into the center tower where this is connected and then it jumps across here through there like I say again into the spark plug producing the spark and generally speaking the pistons at top dead center on the firing stroke meaning that both valve intake and exhaust valves are closed ready for combustion so that's what I have for you today I hope um, I hope I made it as simple as uh, as I could to uh, help you understand how they work now um, later I may make some videos on some of the uh, electronic stuff and as, as they um, they progressed in their technology up to present day where they're using you know they don't even use uh, distributors and a lot of the vehicles now they've gone distributed less can I say that again Distribu distribute I can't even say the word but without a distributor in other words so uh, there's some food for thought have a close look at this video and uh, it'll help you understand in basic terms the mechanical methods they used up until about 1974 1975 General Motors came out with a, a high energy ignition it had a very large uh, distributor cap or it was about this big and they had an ignition module and everything in it but like I say this is the basic setup and it was very easy to understand because it was mechanical you could actually see what's going on when they went uh, with the electronics you can't see what's going on inside those uh, modules, chips, or what have you. But this is a, a basic understanding and the best way that I can uh, show you just what's going on with your engine. Uh, as far as what goes on um, with firing the spark plug and, and the timing of it. But like I say, in future videos I'll try to get into the advanced mechanisms and uh, if I can get a hold of an actual distributor that this uh, point set uh, fits into then it would be all that much better. So enjoy. Have yourself a nice day and uh, bye for now.